going to be quite as crazy as yesterday, uh, it, but there is definitely a possibility for it because these are the teams that don't have to worry about challenge battles. Obviously, yeah. they still want to play for the points to get higher placings and potentially get one of those first round buys or even just to make it to the Unified Championship because that's not locked in by any stretch. And But I feel like because that challenge battles are like these they're all safe. They don't have to worry about it. Maybe they do a little bit of experimentation with the compositions, find out what works yeah. before those new teams come potentially come into the Vingler. Yeah, and I think, if anything, the, the stuff that will come out that will be more off-meta will should be on that B-side pick where you see the Sky into the Alpha or the Rhyme into a triple melee. That's yeah. where it makes sense because if you do an off-meta pick that has a hard counter, then B-side is going to get you in a corner. Yeah, you definitely got to go for those counter picks instead of putting yourself into that awkward situation. Samuel, going to be the first ban of this draft, taken away by Fnatic there. So Agony, not going to get his signature hero. And yeah, that's a very strong pick for both sides. So uh, the fact that Fnatic takes it off the board, uh, again, leaves open multiple, multiple power picks. So now Supremacy has to try and decide who do they want to let through and you know, who do they want to have a chance to pick up for themselves. You gotta figure Vox is gonna be something that's hotly contested as well, because that is one of the best heroes for Mercilles, assuming that's who is starting for them. Yeah, Mercilles definitely signs on that Vox, and yeah. Fnatic is gonna go ahead and take that away. And we saw Tetno play a very capable Vox. So we know Mercilles likes to play Gwen, etc. Not as much as the weapon power melee heroes. So are we gonna see an Idris come out from the side of Supremacy here? Because that's something that we have not seen Mercedes play as often or as well. I think here, a good uh, pick here, but most likely they do prefer like a Lance on Hell's Devil normally, mm -hmm. but they could go for an Arden pick. I don't know if they'll go for a Lyra pick because Vox with Poison Ship is a good counter pick into Lyra. I was about to say, there's also the conversation of Baron. It made it through the first bands and also Grumpjol made it through the bands, but now onto the second set of bands. I, I feel like we don't need to talk much about the Baron pick. This is just an exceptionally strong pick. Yeah, I do want to make con I like that they're picking Baron first, though. That's something that NA tends to do. The EU always likes to first pick that Arden or that Captain normally and not pick that Baron right off, right off the bat. So I do like that the first this first Baron pick here, and I want to see Mercilles on this Baron because I don't think we've seen that before. The Batiste ban is a really solid ban here. I think with Arden is something that Supremacy plays a lot of, so Arden makes a lot of sense to ban away from Supremacy here. Lyra's made it through though into this second round. We could easily see Supremacy oh, yeah. pick up a Lyra. They should pick up Baron. Lyra here. Lyra Baron is an extremely strong combination that we see TSM run very often in uh, NA here. Right, well, uh, I just I do want to go back to the the Vox and Baron pickups just real quick, just because I think that is really smart from Supremacy. You know, they haven't really played this Baron pick and Vox has been the major pick for them. So the fact that they recognize that, okay, Fnatic's trying to put Mercilles on an uncomfortable hero. So let's go ahead and grab the Baron before we go for the captain that many European teams do first. I think that's actually a really smart adaptation that they were able to yeah, make. Yeah, I like this last pick. They like Hellzone now, but Lyra's open. You're going to give Lyra to Vox and Lyra is really good into Baron because of that portal engage and that bulwark can disable Baron. If the bulwark is up, Lance can't root into, if he roots into the bulwark, it'll stop him, like how it stops an Arden Vanguard. So I don't really, I'm not a big fan of the Lance pick. I know they love Hell's Devil on Lance, but he's, shown, he's been shown to be inconsistent on Lance. So he needs to perform very well at a high level in terms of mechanics to really carry his team here. So Blackfeather will be picked with CP and then Lyra will be picked here most likely. Oh, they're gonna go with the Captain Grumpjaw. So very okay. aggressive combination, but risky into a Lance because Lance is really good at disengaging a Grumpjaw. Yeah, interesting to see that Lyra isn't actually gonna make it through. You can see Lyra's statistics on that. Over 50% win and pick rate and not gonna be grabbed on in this draft. We'll see how the could Lance be. is gonna- could I mean, be a jungle we Lance. Could see a, we could see a weapon power Lance, but you know, with a Baron on the side, it seems unlikely that you want to run <laughs> double weapon power with one of them being Lance. It's going to be a Scarf picked up. We've yeah, seen this Yeah, I was going to say Scarf because Agni has played Scarf before and they have played Scarf. And we know that Scarf EU likes playing Scarf into Grumpjaw. Yeah, it's been one of the stronger counters to the Grumpjaw. Scarf and Kestrel are really the two that you want to pick up into the Grumpjaw mm -hmm. in order to deal with this. I, I think Supremacy actually has a very very solid draft here. Yeah, I have to say I'm very impressed by the Supremacy draft. What are our thoughts then on the win conditions for these two teams? What What is Fnatic going to have to do to try and shut down this Baron? Well, Fnatic needs to, once they get level 6, Grumpjaw needs to eat Lance and they need to dive onto Baron or Scarf. However, Scarf and Baron both do AoE damage, so it's going to be a little risky to dive yep. both. They have a stronger early game with that Grumpjaw, so they need to win the early game in Snowball. If 
The Supremacy gets to late game, Supremacy is going to win hands down because Scarf and Baron are yep. just monsters late game. I, that gives me a little bit of worry for Fnatic because one of our biggest conversations has been they need to be more proactive, they need to be aggressive and make things happen, which, you know, that's been a weakness of theirs. This composition definitely lends to that. But they started to turn that around yesterday. They had, they sh at least showed us yesterday that they can play this very aggressive early game style. And if they bring that out again here in this matchup, they should be able to win. They should be able to completely shut down that Scarf. All right, so before the series begins then, I'm going to ask you guys for your predictions. Do you think Supremacy can take this with the draft, with the Baron on their side, or do we think Palmatoro's Blackfeather and the rest of the Fnatic squad can take the lead on this? I really like Baron. I really like Lance on Hell's Devil. I think I'm going to give this game to Supremacy. I'm going to go Supremacy as well, because if all Fnatic can win the early game, they haven't really convinced me that they can close it out. All right, well, we'll see whether Supremacy are going to be able to go for that one. Fnatic definitely have their work cut out. We've been talking about them becoming more proactive, making things happen in these games, and we'll see whether that's something that they can bring to pass. We saw the Black Feather yesterday for Palmatoro. That was when they were proactive. That was when they were making things happen, and we'll see whether they can replicate that today. Just before we jump on into this game, we are just waiting on one of the players quickly. I'm going to ask you guys a little bit more. What is it, then, that... Um, I nearly said Rising Lotus, that Supremacy, <laughs> um, what can Supremacy do to make sure that they get to this late game? How do they shut down the Fnatic early aggression here? We have tight rotations, don't get caught out. Hells Devil tends to get caught out. He needs to play really well here. He needs to rotate to make sure they don't lose jungle mm -hmm. and don't lose an early turret. Okay. It's just going to be using that Lance to try and dissuade early aggression. But if they do make heavy invades with two or three members on Fnatic, leave the jungle. Don't go for those early game fights when you're not going to win them. All right. So back out when it's happening. Make sure cut that... Cut your losses. Yeah. Cut the bleeding. Stop the bleeding before it's too late. We'll see if they're going to be able to bring that to pass. It's time to head on into this one. Let us know who you're supporting. Hashtag Vainglory8. Let us know if you're a Supremacy or a Fnatic supporter. But with that, it's time to jump on in to our first match of the day. It's time for Fnatic versus Supremacy. In our first semi-finals of the day, and the last day of casting, potentially for a while, for Shingle Bells. Denise, how you doing? I'm good. It's, it's a bit of a sad day today, actually, because of this, but I think it's going to be a good one as well. I think it's going to be a great day. We're starting off with a very fun match up here. A couple power picks. On the board, slipping through the draft. Grumchop, Baron? I mean, what's going on here? Yeah, I, 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 I'm asking that myself as well. I feel like we've really got some people in their comfort picks. We do have that Baron that is typically very difficult to combat. I think we did see that Alpha coming out against the Baron yesterday. That just did not work out as well. Uh, but having, I think, having Techno JJ on that box, I think that is just one of his longtime favorite heroes. And right now, we're seeing Netto and Agony in a 1v1. Yeah, they're playing some games right now. I, I do love the... We have a pause. I do I love, love that too. the Scarf into Grumpjaw. Eventually, we'll be very strong. Net can struggle. Not Net, but the Grumpjaw pick can struggle. Um, But yeah, I mean, Tetno. You, you mentioned Tetno JJ on the Vox. This is one of Tetno JJ's all-time favorite comfort picks. I mean, this is, one, this is a hero he always seems to perform on. Definitely. I think it's, it's like heroes like Ringo, heroes like Vox as well. And I think Vox has been one that we've been seeing a lot coming out from him over the past few seasons, uh, just because he's been a bit more meta. His mechanical skill is very, very strong. And I think that's been a bit difficult for the Baron and the Scarf to try and land their, like, their Porcupine Mortars and the Spitfires onto him. But going to the point where you're saying about the Scarf and Grumjaw matchup, uh, the moment that Nettolet hits that level 6 and has that stuffed ability, I think we'll just be anticipating he'll be going for Mercilles or Agony every single time. Just getting that block just going to be absolutely imperative there uh, for Supremacy. I, th I feel like... Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we might have some connection issues we're working on right now, but... The, I feel like it's going to be very hard for Nett's Grumjaw to get on target, on onto the Baron, onto that Scarf, once we get past the early game, like once we get in like the mid into the late game, it feels like it's going to be really tough for him to get in position. Yeah, I think Hell's Devil's going to have a lot to do with that. As that lands, your ability, you're, you, you are there to peel for your teammates. And who better to do that than a lance who can use his Githian wall to knock that Grump Jaw back? Uh, it just depends on whether or not, because you do have two, two potential heroes with, that, uh, with the Black Feather and with the Grump Jaw who can dive onto the members of Supremacy. So it just depends on what you're, what you're holding that Githian wall for. And we'll have to keep our eyes on, of course, Palmatoro looking to take 
these guys down with some big empowered uh, on points there. The CP Blackfeather is not something you want to mess with. Net playing games with Hell's Devil in this jungle. Looks like Hell's Devil thinking about porting back. Nah, he's just going to hang out. A Scarf making his way back out from the base. Well, Mercilius and Tetno will just go ahead and continue to farm. I do like that Mercilius picked up the Light Shield early on. I think it's a, a nice pickup against the Vox. It is a nice pickup against the Vox as well. I think I think it's necessary. Um, we're having we're seeing Hell's Devil and Mercilius, Mercilius uh, up in both of them up in lane there, and I think it actually certainly to anticipate that Palmatoro, who's got that Crystal Black Feather, he's got you know a considerable range there on that on point that Mercilius is going to be careful of, especially because he's only just got the jump jets. He doesn't always have that easy escape straight away. Right now we see Net Twilight heading up to lane there. Potentially a gank coming up there for Mercilius. Give me that Grumpy. There it is. Net gives him that Grumpy. A little hangry, Mercilius will go ahead and jump jets backwards. Not the ideal jump jet situation for O'Baron, but Net making the plays, setting the tempo. He is on uh, the opposite side of Hell's Devil and Agony as he makes his way down. Just kind of being a nuisance at this point. Faint of heart into the on point. Hell's Devil hits him with that Githian wall, very nicely played. Should be enough to get uh, Net and Palmatora out of their jungle, I'd assume. Impale into the Spitfire. A couple attacks. They ignite the goop. Moving forward, Agony. Oh. That's his boots used. The Net should get out of this one. Palmatora buying just enough time for his ally. Just enough time. I think that's a good example of uh, the Scarf Grumjaw matchup there. It's easy for him to land those Fan the Flame heroic perk there onto him. Palmatora's going to escape this one, I think. Palm no, he's not. We'll be going down. There you go. As this is Agony. Dude, you know what? I feel like supremacy. When they when they want to win, they're just like we just we'll give the scarf to Agony. All right, it's time to win. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. I mean, supremacy. If they've not had the best uh, past few weeks there in the Vainglory Eight, to be honest, uh, I think they've just really been waiting, trying to get that opportunity there. They, I think they won against yesterday against Avalanche on the off stream matches. So yeah, I think Agony on that scar, again, one of the comfort picks. So, so this is just a bit of an odd composition coming out from both of the teams is that we've got, we do have this mix of like comfort picks for a lot of the players. And then we also do have these power picks such as Grumpjaw and Baron that's been picked up as well, which is a kind of a terrifying combination that's coming out here for both of the teams. Terrifying indeed, but nothing quite as terrifying as the fact that Treants never seem to just permanently die in Europe. They just keep coming back and rooting you right in the middle the of a team fight, taking your team down 2-0. Tetno, he is stunned up, jumps Jungle jets forward. Mercilius almost taking him down, but Net and Palmatoro around the backside. John Mercilius, Net's there, he's hangry, he's grumpy, he's trying to get on target. Mercilius, what are you thinking? Mercilius, get out of here, Mercilius. That's not where you want to be. His corpse will jump jet away, Hell's Devil, finding the impale and the damage with the help of Agony. Agony with the, uh, Pretty safe positioning there. I gotta wonder, Supremacy, what were you thinking? Well, th what they were thinking was good. They had the gang there onto Techno JJ. They had the perfect line up there. They have this a lot of you know, a lot of range, a lot of damage there from Mercilies and Agony there. Um, I think what was what they weren't expecting was the flank there coming up from Palmatoro and Netsula. And it was perfect positioning for Palmatoro there because all three members of Supremacy were clumped up. So the on point just hit every single member there. It was very, very dangerous. Not everyone was going to escape. And Mercilies was not able to. He is able to escape this time, thanks to his jump jets. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's something that they're going to have to be cautious of because with the, the combination of this Baron and Scarf, they've got such an impressive range for both of the carries there that they really don't have to always be putting themselves at such risk like they did in that situation. You've got this goop, you've got the slow coming out from the Porcupine Mortars as well. Um, I, feel, I feel like we'll be seeing a lot more of the effects as we get into the late game where the skills do begin to scale up a lot better. Mm -hmm. And perhaps when Agony picks up the Frostburn first, I think that might not be a bad item to go for. What item? I'm sorry, I didn't. I'm sorry, Frostburn. Oh, Frostburn. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if he decides to go into that. I mean, the thing I think for Supremacy is just, you know, Mercedes got to remember, hey, you know, you may be doing all right now, but you don't have to force a fight, you're barren. You just farm. Yeah, you, you just farm. Get a couple farm. items and then kill people. Keep it passive, keep it keep it very, very passive, and then you start one-hitting people later on. Like, if you get the opportunity yeah. to get to that as a Baron, um, it's going to be very, very difficult because then you'll have to see a lot of target focus coming out. For, um, it forces all this target focus coming out from Fnatic here. All right, well, Marsilius is back. He's going to be picking up a Sorrow Blade. Sounds pretty good. Agony uh, going into that Frostburn first, and uh, we'll see what he decides to go next. does have components that could lend themselves towards an Eve of Harvest, but you never know if he'll pivot towards something like a Broken Myth. 
Uh, right now, Fnatic as three. They're going to be flared out by Supremacy. Hell's Devil having none of their shenanigans at this point. Net Toilette, only level four. He does need some more experience. They have a, a nice impale following it up with the ignited goop there. You can see they're very comfortable landing those combinations. Extremely comfortable, and they're, defo they're focusing a lot onto Net Toilette right now. Every time we see an impale, Hell's Devil's landing that impale onto Net Toilette, who is probably the easiest target. Hell's Devil might not escape this time, actually. Woo! Ah, Spit fire! Scout trap right there. That's a good amount of damage. There's a very good amount of damage there. Uh, they've all had to, we've, we, Palmsaurus had to go lick his wounds, get that treant as well. So, I think we're at the kind of impasse here between the two teams. And we see this a lot. I think we saw a lot of this yesterday, where the teams were just biding their time. They went for very typically late game compositions. We just knew that, and they just kind of waited for that moment to hit. And I feel with this Grump Joe as well, they are just really waiting for that level six. So, that's like the greatest crowd control that they can have. Agony and Mercedes, neither of them have that reflex block. So, it's so easy to isolate that target if they can dodge the Githy Mall coming out from Hell's Devil. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of at this point where you start to think, like, what are the uh, ultimates going to bring to the table? Well, you're like, Hell's Devil? <laughs> you can roll now! Grumpjaw, Netoilette, like, oh, I can eat somebody and completely reposition them. That's pretty good. That's a very good one. Um, there he is, moving forward. Level 5! Just trying to psych Mercilius out. Mercilius is like, oh, wait, wait, wait. You're not a level 6 Grumpjaw. What are you doing? Yeah, I feel like Mercilius, he's sitting on a lot of gold. We're seeing a lot of pressure coming up from Fnatic right now. So Mercilius is think, just trying to get his farm as well. But he's sitting on, what, almost 1,500 gold now. Uh, that's a lot of farm. If he just goes into the shop, I think, otherwise, if Fnatic force a fight, he's in an awkward position here. Tento's farming like a monster. On point's going to land. Faint of Heart moving forward. Mercilius has got to get back. Jump Jets, Palmator moving in. But with the help of Hell's Devil, they will be able to bail their ally out. Uh, this Hell's Devil still holding his fountain. I imagine Agony will be rotating up into the lane as Fnatic start to apply pressure on point lands. On the Hell's Devil. Petno still farming. I want to mention, 100 last hits, uh, about 8.5 minutes in. Petno having uh, a fantastic time. That is Techno JJ though on Vox. This is his Vox. He's so good at farming. I think every time we've seen it, he's consistently just, uh, just out, outperforming that kind of recommended 10 CS per minute guy there like he's and especially with the baron as well i think the vox versus baron matchup in terms of farming it might be a little bit easier for that vox as well and um, we'd be seeing a fanatic applying a lot of pressure in the lane here onto supremacy so i think that, part, that also explains part of it but despite the uh, 10 cs advantage there going towards techno jj the gold is actually identical on both of the teams here yeah it is incredibly even nine minutes in we have three kills on the board i gotta say Yesterday, Europe was very quiet, uh, very methodical in their approaches to winning games. We, I mean, we had a couple games go like almost 10 minutes with like one kill or no kill. Yeah, it was all about the macro play, as the analyst desk said later on. I think that was an extremely true statement. Is that what they said? I, I did not it listen was... to our analyst. <laughs> I'm going to tell them you said that. <laughs> Let's see how they did. I, I, this is a bit of a dangerous situation. I think for supremacy here, uh, the ideal playing ground for them is to be in the lane. With this Baron or with this uh, Scarf there, it's so easy for them to be landing those Mortars and those Spitfires onto the members of Fnatic. You know, it's a narrow channel, whereas in the jungle, it gives Fnatic so much more room to maneuver, especially with heroes such as Black Brother and Vox. There's a lot more uh, mobility there that can really they can really use to punish Supremacy here. So I think Supremacy, they're making the right move, they're staying in the lane as often as they can. And this is, to be honest, is what they need to avoid those missteps. Ooh, Mercedes just just uh, on the edge of getting hit by these on points to see Palmator using max range. <laughs> There's gonna be the stuff, his net. He's found himself a little dragon. Gonna pull him back under the turret in agony and getting chopped down, but Baron's there with a couple basics. Can't find enough damage to get a kill on point. Mercedes slaps him back. One of those big basics. Netflix hanging out. He's gonna move forward. He's grumpy, hangry. And uh, the mortars will be able to slow him down. A little attacks coming out. Netflix getting low. You can tell he's not really feeling uh, threatened too much at this point. Well, Techno just continues to farm. That is Techno. Mercilies, he, is, he too is also going to continue to farm. He's uh, He's got the Tension Bow, he's got the Sorrow Blade. And I think going back to that last fight where we... Uh, the last fight? The last fight where we did see the Scarf being picked, up by, picked off by the Stuff. That was anticipated. Scarf is probably the easiest target. He does not have an escape such as the jump jets that Mercilies does. So going for Scarf, pushing under the turret, we saw how quickly he was able to shoot, go uh, be shot down there. So he's prioritizing <laughs> that reflex block after that uh, unfortunate kill. 
Yeah, he's got that reflex now. And uh, that, that was a huge pickup. I, I was actually really surprised that Net was able to weave in there and make that play happen. But I'm not kidding around when I <laughs> I, I hold Net in actually very high regard. I think he's one of the best uh, captains in the world, honestly. And uh, he's making the play there. Fnatic trying to rally around this captain, Grumjaw. The Spitfires continue to come out from Agony, becoming ever more powerful as the time does go on. And we do see uh, Mercilles now with the overdriven jump jets. It's, it's going to be much more difficult to lock this guy down. Yeah, definitely. So when he's over it, he's not going to be, he's just immune to crowd, those crowd control abilities. I think what's worrying for me right now is just that uh, Nettolite, he already has a stuffed ability available. It's already up. And I think once you over, if you, it's, it's got such a short cooldown as well for such a powerful crowd control ability. And you're not going to be able to, once you get into the late game, you're not going to be able to reflex block every single one of them. And if you, I think if you're going to be that scarf and you know you're going to pick down, um, you'd be relying a lot on Hell's Devil as that lands for that peel, obviously. But I think you'd also need to be um, prioritizing that defense relatively on or getting that sustain. Two men impale. Uh -oh, Spitfire lands, what? the group ignites. Net has to get himself back. Tetno's going to eat a Spitfire. That's starting to add up. Whoa! A oh! couple attacks coming out of Mercedes there. And that puts Fnatic down very low. And I, I could see why people pick this hero. The, the Baron? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the one that almost killed two people with like one a more. Net jumps back in though. A defensive jump jets out. Palmatoro <laughs> it's just like half his health bar. No big deal. No big deal whatsoever. And you know, Marcellus is doing this with two thousand gold in his pocket. He's you know he's he can, he's got there's plenty of gold to pick up his third item. Um, he's, he can just go for all offensive with those jump jets. The fact that he's overdriven them it puts him in a lot more safer position there. So, actually, I think we're going to be seeing Fnatic trying to get some damage on the start, but there's no minions there. But I think, as far as we're concerned right now, Baron is beginning to reach a very comfortable point, to put it lightly. And so is that Scar. What if He's you weren't up. putting it lightly? How would we describe it? It's probably not appropriate for the cast. Like... I mean, let's be, let's be real. Like, like, it's swear. your last gas, right? Better go uh, out swinging. I still don't think, I, I'm not, you know, I'm gonna play it safe. It's like, I'm playing it safe. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna. My last day, I'm gonna get fired. I'm gonna tell you that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't fire me. That's, Please. A good joke. That's a good joke. Agony drops down. He's gonna be able to pick up that broken myth. 13 minutes, 45 seconds into this one. And now this scarf's gonna be doing a lot of damage. Pitfire connects on the Tetno, ignites his goop there. And now Marsilius is back out into the lane. Has Tyrant's monocle com completed here. 14 minutes in. This was a three item uh, Baron. Uh, 14 minutes into this game. We're tied up 2 2. Net worth pretty even overall. But it feels like someone is about to get destroyed. And it feels like Fnatic in these team fights. It really does feel like Supremacy. They've got such incredible range. They're able to poke so comfortably that Fnatic, they just really have to find the positioning uh, and just choose one target to dive on. And right now, like I, was saying, I was, like I was saying before, lane's probably not the best area for it because it really puts them at such like huge vulnerabilities at um, either Mercilles or Agony. So it's, it's an awkward position for Fnatic to be in, but I feel like because they have all their abilities available and because Scarf isn't there, they maybe have the chance there with that stuffed ability. I mean, yeah, you make you make good points. I think also like, you know, let's not be biased casters, okay? Like we're they not, have, we're a, never have biased. a Tetno three items as well. It's with the breaking point. So if they can weave in and around these fights, getting onto a key target, it's gonna stack up real fast. And we could see Tetno, you know, potentially dancing through the fight and melting targets down if they do not get blown up early on here. Kraken has awakened. Fifteen minutes in here. And this is pretty much the signal. It's go time, team. It is, it is absolutely go time. I think Techno JJ, uh, 181 CS to Mercedes, 156. Supremacy, uh, they're, 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 you know what? They're, I was about to say they're looking a bit engaged, but they're actually pretty comfortable not engaging, just kind of poking away as they're doing there. And what we're saying about Fnatic is about them weaving, they have to maneuver about, they, they, they have this ability. And with Techno JJ and Palmasaur, these are probably two of the players that you can. I could say would definitely be able to do that, and I feel like if he can get on top of Agony, who or Merciless actually, neither of them have, have much defense. If they can just pin either of them down, throw a wait for it at them, silence them, and then um, prevent him from using that jump jets, maybe they have a good chance of just knocking at Merciless, who's clearly probably one of the biggest threats right oh, now. Oh, they definitely back. can. They definitely can. I think just closing the gap is going to be the problem. Is Agony, if he's on point with his Spitfires, if he's on target with his Spitfires, 
Uh, he's going to be bu bu building up Broken Myth stack, slowing them with his Frostburn. Net continuously getting hit as you can just throw him down this brush, down the left side. This is this is one of the nice things when you know that you have a straight on an angle like that, or you're in a choke point. Uh, it's very easy to just throw your Spitfires out continuously. Agony doing a great job. We can see why they do pick with the cart for him. Infusions come out for Supremacy on both the carry and the jungler. When we said that was a ghost signal before, this looks like a ghost signal for sure at this point. They are ready to fight. Tetno dropping low, about 60% of his overall health. So we're going to need Palmatoro to maybe yeah. grab an item and get back up into the lane rather quickly here. Yeah, definitely. He's heading up to the lane there. And he has a dragon heart. I think so. When we saw Tetno, look, we had this kind of like glimmer of hope there from that when they looked like they were about to. Uh, finally pick up their target. So we saw Tenno JJ, he picked up a few breaking point stacks relatively quickly. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to get much damage there then. Oh, no. Ooh Hell's Devil, let's be real though. That was a pretty flashy little impale, but that a was. very nice block. It was a very nice block out from Palmatoro. Uh, I feel like it's just to kind of get this feeling that Supremacy, they're look, beginning to look for blood now. Two for two on the map, 17 minutes. Kraken's out, no turrets have been taken. Yeah, they just need to like one shot this turret and then uh, kill some going. people. Net's gonna move in, they block all that stuffed. Exactly what they need. Now they start to turn, they're gonna miss on the impale. Agony looking for the Spitfires as Mercilius is just looking for a target. Jump jets are available, ready to go. He's not in target for his basic. There they are, Net almost going down. Fountain comes out on point lands and Mercilius. The fountain comes out of Suprem Supremacy as Fnatic are on the chase. Are they gonna loot Baron actually gets out? Hell's Devil probably left for dead. Fnatic finding a way to turn this. And this is one of the things like if you swing and you miss, they're able to do a little bit of damage. They have very high mobility. They were able to chase Supremacy down. They were, and what we, what happened was Techno JJ. So he has he has that level twelve infusion. He was building up the breaking point stacks really quickly. He got eight there. He built all the breaking point stacks on the lands, just making sure he was steering clear of Mercilles and Agony. The moment he had the eight, we saw the fountain coming out from Net Toilet, which gave them enough for Fnatic to turn back, throw out the wait for it, and that's how they were able to pick up the kill on Mercilles there. And uh, th that, those kind of actions, that is exactly what we've seen from Fnatic. They made the best out of bad situation. They lost his heart, but they were able to pick up a kill there. That is. That is everything, because Mercilles, he does not have that defense. He's got the Kinesic Shield, so... He, but against Techno JJ, the one with the breaking point, the one with infusions, he's he's got nothing. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, if Techno's able to get to... And did you see, what was his max breaking point stacks he got? Not right. I want to say 12. Like, he okay. started off at 8, and then I went to 12. Like, on... Uh, so he was like, hey, when he was... Like, on. Oh. Do you see the... We got War Treads on Techno. I like that. <laughs> Double engage. That's pretty interesting. That's pretty neat, huh? Is that I, like I, is that like another way to 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 move Grumpjaw? Like if he grabs a target, if he's used his, I don't know. I feel like it's a way of catching supremacy up by surprise. So yeah, you've got one potential engage or disengage with that war on net toilet. And then if Techno JJ is still not in position, I mean, we're talking about how much mobility is going to be me uh, mobility means in this game like for Fnatic, having that extra kind of speed booster for the whole team to get them into position, uh, especially on top of two such high range heroes. This is this is what this is what they need. And right. Well, I mean, I think it's a it's a wonderful pickup. We may have an engage here. On point's going to connect. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm like almost coughing uh, through these casts. It's pretty hard. Throat's hurting a little bit. It's, I do apologize, team. Hell's Devil doing his best to control the, the right tri brush here as Net moves forward. Tetno, just a couple attacks, and you see two breaking point stacks. Two attacks, two breaking point stacks. I mean, very easy for him at this point to start building those up. Mercilius does realize where Palmatoro is, and he's a little bit zoned out. He is a little bit zoned out, and Palmatoro. Slumbering Husk. I like nice. it. I was, about to say, I was about to talk about that because um, we were saying before, uh, Bard, he's uh, with two hits, he's just. Taking in either Palmatoro or Techno JJ down to about a third health. So having the Slumbering Husk enables him to stay in the fight just a little bit longer. Just That's to really cool. sustain through that burst. Yeah, it's such a, such an interesting item. And, you know, I think people are starting to build it uh, a little more effectively as time goes on. That is a, a great scout trap down in the in the, the shot brush on the right side coming out of Fnatic that uh, Supremacy, they walked down to shop, I think, two times. It did not clear that out. So a lot of value coming out of that one scout trap there. Oh yeah, 50 for 50 gold. They're they're getting a lot of yeah, exactly. They're getting a lot of value for it. Um, so now that we've lost the first turret and the lanes pushed up, this leaves supremacy. I feel like they could take that kraken in extremely, extremely quickly and just force that fight out. Um, but one thing I was gonna say is, for them to fight in the jungle, it's not the best part because there's so much just area for the black feather and for the the box to dance around in. That might be quite difficult 
for supremacy to try and pin down a particular member. Well, and you can always fight up against these walls with the lance if they can find a stun. Oh They're no! Up, up. Well, that actually is going to be able to cancel that off, and they get back. Mercilius, he's got the damage coming out. Ion Cannon will just clip Fnatic on the edge. It looks like they were able to retreat. Uh, both war treads actually burned for the team. Palmatero Toro still holding on to his boots there. Fnatic still holding their fountain, and uh, they are ready to fight should they wish as they move back out onto the map. Palmatoro will snipe off his mid. <laughs> I don't think so, Supremacy. <laughs> cheeky uh, Palmatoro there with the cheeky little steal there. So, 1.6k, 1.7, uh, well, 1.6k between the two teams right now. Fnatic have a very minor gold lead, despite being a turret. Well, no, no, they're not even turret down. They're 1.6k ahead. And I think part of this reason is Techno JJ just out farming Mercilles on in terms of CS. He's 20 ahead. You know, Techno's point, trying to get his, oh, his player of the week stats on point. Net, dude, Net's getting lit up. He has to completely be the backline on this fight now. Hell Devils, Hell's Devil will miss his impact. Oh my God! Palma jumps back into Mercilius. He's on target, moving forward with the boots. He's gonna be able to find the kill. Actually, it's uh, Techno credited with that one. And they're gonna also lose Hell's Devil on the backside. And are you kidding me? Agony getting chased down. He's slowed and chopped oh, down. Nice. Fanatic coming through big with the ace and. Everybody's like, well, why is Techno just farming? That's why. That That is why. Um, he was able to dodge the, the, the initial engage coming from Hell's Devil with the Impale. And I think he's been doing that consistently every single time. I've not seen Techno JJ being uh, stunned up by the Impale at once, I think, so far in this game. Um, and I think one thing that would, would be such a good item pickup for Hell's Devil would be that War Tread. Because we're seeing a lot of focus there going on to Marsilis. He's not able to back away. He's used his jump just already. He doesn't have, you know, he doesn't have the cooldown for the second. Having that War Tread is just able to allow him to increase the gap between Fnatic and Mercedes would help him stay alive because they're just focusing everything on him. And once they get Mercedes down, um, they take away the incredible burst damage that they have, and then it's so easy for them to focus on Agony. It does feel like a bit of miscommunication, if I'm being completely honest. It should, you shouldn't be grabbing someone. Net shouldn't be in position there um, to be landing a stuffed on anybody, really, with the scarf. Like, just Spitfires, Goops, Spitfires and Goops. Impales and Githian walls, and then you just let Baron wait for the opportunity to destroy someone. It's gonna be net over the wall, and as Palmator looks to continue landing these on points, they're, they're really actually hurting this fight. Double on point landing, Kraken marching forward. Hell's Devil and the rest of Supremacy need to make a move here. What what's the play gonna be? Net's actually stuffed up on Hell's Devil, and they're gonna move back. Mercilius trying to find the damage. It's Agony dropping low. Fountain comes out, keeps the scarf alive on the healing platform. They've lost their last turret. They've taken down Techno JJ. They're probably gonna get Death Blood as well. Yeah, they should. This, ah. this is dropping uh, very low. Well, they do have enough damage, especially with that Scarf. They're gonna be able to kill off this crack in here. This game, very coming down uh, to the wire here for Supremacy. <laughs> Absolutely down to the wire there. Uh, still, they're staying in there in gold, but they are four tarts behind. They're down to the crystals, very exposed. Uh, what we need to be seeing are those scout traps being picked up by Hell's Devil, which he has done to prevent those backdoor engagements, which is possible with that with Palmatoro there. And even with the Grump Jaw. So they just need to push that tart. They have the time. This could be a very close game. I think they have the chance to get in two tarts before they can back away and just focus on focus on taking the jungle. Supremacy. But one tart. I think there's a second one. So just All right, what are, let's take uh, odds right now in the chat. Um, <laughs> press one if you think Fnatic will win. Press two if you know Supremacy will win. What would you press, one or two? Me. Mm, you. I, I think in the team fight, I feel like Fnatic are going to win this. In terms of the team play, plays being executed, they're Jenny they're, presses they're the one as the team fight begins. Oh. Fnatic looking for a key target. Agony able to block off. Actually, there was a nice crucible by Hell's Devil to block off that stuffed coming out of net to let. What, what a captain, Hell's Devil, making the plays that Agony needed. Adrian is going to root up Agony as he's trying to port home. That's just funny. That is very, very funny. I think we're, gonna, we're seeing the trouble infusions coming out from everyone. Hell's Devil now has the war chest. This is what they need. They've still been held on to. And interestingly, actually, Mercilius has his own pair of war chests now as well. Uh, so they kind of mimic what Fnatic are doing there with Techno JJ and Netflix picking up the war chests. I think I oh. woke up in a Realized. split reality this morning in which war treads <laughs> on everybody is now the meta, apparently. Uh, Hell's Devil with the two-man Githian into the two-man Impale. Light them! Oh, what? Eat them! You're a bear! 
Aaron, what are you oh, Moving forward to Mercilius. He's got the jump jets. He's on the net. Nets on the front line. Tetno. Building a couple breaking points. Dax looking to move. Four Dragon's Breath could be coming out. They burn down. Net Tetno is on the menu. That's a double kill for the Baron. And hey, why not? But who's the, who's the sneaky black feather? Palmatoro moving in for the back door. But he will be thwarted in his attempts. The scout trap's gonna be able to, to find him out. Oh, Crystal Sentry moving in as well. This is very interesting. Okay, fine, fine. Palma, Palma Throzo. Palma, what have you done? This is oh, the, uh, one of the mm, least excellent plays I've seen you make in a while. Theoretically, we can see exactly what he's doing, but, you know, you can... Press Me 2 now for Supremacy. <laughs> Everybody's pressing 2 now. They're changing their minds. Okay, so... You, you, you're so supremacy. They have the Kraken. They have this, uh, they have a scarf and a baron who are very happy just to stay behind the Kraken and push with it. So happy. And Netwell is the first one to spawn. It's, it, to put it bluntly, it's not looking great for Fnatic right now. And I pressed one. So it feels, I know what it feels like. It feels bad. It does feel real bad, man. But, I mean, let's be real. There is still a chance to throw this one. Um, There's always supremacy. a chance to throw. I think they're going to play it careful, though. As they let Kraken start to march forward. Let's abuse this range on the Scarf, guys. Let's not get caught at this point. Net moves forward. Okay. That's going to be Atlas Pauldron only applied onto the Scarf. That's not really where you want to get it. Ion Cannon comes down. Agony taking a lot of damage. Kraken still hits onto the Vein Crystal Turret. you got to do something. Oh, Fnatic, one. they've taken one down. Mercilius is going to jump jets forward, but this is Hell's Devil onto the last remaining turret. Mercilius just zoning Double out kill. Fnatic like a monster. A beast of a Baron. A Their beast of burden. Beast. Triple kill coming through for Mercilius in the end. What a Baron player. I haven't seen crits like that since yesterday. 11 to 7, Supremacy takes it in the late game. And with that late game composition of the Baron, we saw how much Baron was able to do at the very end. A lot of critical, uh, critical strike there. And I feel, you know, it, it kind of it kind of hurts because it feels like Fnatic were doing so well in the team fights. I feel like they had advantage every single team fight. It just felt at the end where we did see Palmatoro kind of split focus there. It did feel a bit like a throw there. Well. Maybe a bit of a throw, and uh, with that, we'll go ahead and throw it back to the desk as well. Thank you very much, guys. What a game coming out. Fnatic, it all looked so good for them. They even won a late game fight, which is what we were saying was the win condition for Supremacy. But then it all just went tight. The, the Nexus, or Vein Crystal, survived <laughs> on this much HP, and then it all fell apart for them. I mean, let's start with the beginning of the game, which you know, took a very long time. It was a very passive game from both teams. Yeah, it was a very passive game. Fnatic needs to be, again, be more assertive. Tenno was ahead on CS. He got his full build at 18 minutes. He was still farming instead of letting Blackfeather farm and get his full build. And they needed to push their advantage once Tetno was up on CS. And they had like a 1 to 2k gold lead at certain points. So they needed to push the advantage, get the early turret, deny jungle, get sentry. Like, they didn't make any objective push. And their macro play was really lacking from that perspective. And because they let the uh, Supremacy get to late game, they really struggled. And Supremacy actually made a mistake. They did not have double war treads to counter the double war treads coming out of Fnatic. As soon as they got double war treads after they finished off the Kraken, Sup Supremacy won that game easily. Yeah, and Fnatic, once we got towards that late game, started to struggle in the fights and Palmatoro getting caught out really kind of sealed the deal for them once we got to that late stage. And honestly, the, the damage coming out from Scarf in these fights was really, really stacking up. And especially in that situation where Hell's Devil could just be that brick wall of a front yeah. line to protect his team, they could just diss out so much with the Baron and the Scarf. Not only that, but especially in that last team fight we saw, the Scarf was should have been dead to rights so early in that fight, but had enough damage that the lifesteal from the Eve of Harvest was able to keep him alive. And this Baron, late game Baron, essentially 1v3 in the final team fight of the game. They managed to save the Crystal here. This was very yeah. nearly the end of the game, but then this fight in particular. This was the moment where it all went a little bit wrong for Fnatic. Yeah, this is a mistake here by Fnatic. They, the whole team was up. They tried to rush the sentry. This is very daring. And they've done this before with Goldmine Objectives last season. The same mistake kind of outplayed today. Just bad decision making from a macro perspective here. And because of that play, they kill. And here is what I was talking about when the draft. They can, although they can kill Scarf or potentially Baron, Baron and Scarf do so much AoE damage that they can actually clean up the 
fights when they get to their late game power. And look at the damage and the AoE burst just coming out of Baron here. And this is a perfect example of how you cannot let a Baron and Scarf get to a late game. 27 minutes in, there's no reason why Supremacy should lose, especially when they have double War Treads who counter the engage. Yep. Fnatic had their chance when they engaged with War Treads. They got onto Agony, killed them, or actually Baron, killed them right off the bat. But then they didn't finish the game there, and that's when they, they couldn't make it back from there. And I mean, towards the start of the game, you can see on your screen, there was a 30 CS lead in favor of Techno JJ against the Baron as well. It was actually looking great for Fnatic, and I mean, we saw them almost win the game, but they just couldn't transition that lead. They couldn't yep. turn that into more than... I, I felt like they were too passive on in the early game. Once again, this is something we keep on coming back to for Fnatic, is they didn't turn these leads into objectives. They didn't snowball that and, and start to turn it into a more significant lead. They were more than happy to just kind of farm it out across the course of the game. Yeah, when the team is trying to turtle under turret, especially with Baron Scarf, because Baron is such good wave clear, Go ahead, push the objectives, get a sentry, get the gold mine, force them to come into the jungle to fight you, etc. And I felt like Fnatic didn't do enough at it. The like, sentry should have been eliminated by the 15 minute mark. Like, there's no reason for the sentry to still be alive after 15 minutes, honestly. All right, so now we're going to be looking towards this next draft. I feel like in both compositions, Lyra could have been a huge factor, and it was something we talked about in the last draft, and it never got picked up. Do we think that's something these teams will lean towards this time, or are we still going to be sitting in these comfort picks like the Lance for Hell's Devil? I, I think the comfort picks are going to come through, and there's no reason for them to change it up into that Lyra. It wasn't... The Lyra, I don't think, would have been a game changer for them because the Lance was so important to keep yeah. those carries safe when it got to the later part, portions of this fight. Yeah, I, I, one thing about Lyra is Fnatic plays Lyra. They play Lyra really well, and Lyra is a hard counter into Baron. Like, if she bulwarks, he, he cannot jump out unless they use a Reflex or Crucible to get him out of that. But Lyra is really good into Baron. They can poke with the Black Feather. They can push a lot of early game mm -hmm. uh, pressure with the heals. Grumpjaw works early game, but completely falls off late game. Lyra with War Treads and Portal, you can stay on and keep engaging and, and get onto Baron. And they needed to pick Lyra in that draft there. Yeah, strong at all points of the game. We'll see if it's going to be a focus in this one or whether they stick to their gun supremacy. Now 1-0 up in this series and immediately going to ban away the Idris, which they're looking for a Baron towards pick. Baron, right? Yep, yep. Great call up, Munchables. They're looking for a Baron pick here, so I think Fnatic may telegraph that and just ban the Baron right now, but that will, will leave Grace or Lyra open. They're going to instead ban the Vox here, and that's interesting ban there, and then that's going to leave Supremacy open. They're just going to pick up the Baron again and, and play a Baron composition into and, Fnatic here. And this is so smart. Oh, they're going to go for Grace instead. Okay, so they didn't go for this Baron. That's an interesting one. Uh, it looked like for sure they were going to be, like you said, banning away the Idris and then set, telling Fnatic, you're going to give us either Vox or Baron because Mercilius obviously is very yeah. much likes the Vox pick as well. So now there's a chance for Baron to not make it through with this next wave of bans. Yeah, and I think that's the, the, the thought behind this Vox ban is like, okay, you pick Baron then and we'll just grab the Grace instead. And Supremacy have been like, you want the Grace? Well, we're taking the Grace, and you can have the Baron there. Huh? Yeah, with Vox banned, Grace is <laughs> actually way really good now, because Vox <laughs> is good into Grace. So now Fnatic, I think they should pick up Lyra here. Lyra, they need a healer against a healer, otherwise it's going to be a shard. They're going to say go for the Batiste, and is this a potential Captain Batiste, like how Nova does it? Maybe, we'll see. So now they can potentially keep Baron up, because they can pick yeah, Baron That's what Batiste. I was going to say. But they're going to ban it! Oh my god, Fnatic, what are you doing? Yeah, that doesn't make sense, because now it's just an easy Lyra ban for the side of Supremacy, whereas if you they didn't ban the Baron uh, for Fnatic, it forces Supremacy to right. either have to ban Baron or Lyra, and Fnatic could have taken the other one, but this should be a very easy Lyra ban, unless there's something specific that Fnatic has in mind. I, it's That's got to be what Supremacy's thinking about right now, why they're taking so long to choose their ban. Can I, can I just take a moment to point out the fact that Baron has a 68.8% win rate right now. <laughs> Baron is just <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, it is the thing. highest win rate in all of Inglory, as far as I'm aware. I can't say it surprises me. Having seen, like, I mean, we literally saw Masili's 1v3 at the end of the last okay. game on Baron. Harden ban is interesting. Like, you're going to give a competition of Lyra, Batiste. That's a lot of sustain. Batiste already is a self-sustaining hero himself. And you're going to hand him Lyra on top of that. That's a lot of power in the jungle and sustain. 
They can out jungle a lot of jungle duels here. So let's see if Fnatic is going to pick up this Lyra here or they're going to go for a Lance or Catherine to counter the Grace. They're actually going to pick up the Black Feather, maybe save the Lyra as a last pick here because they want to deny the Black Feather. Or they're planning on running a Captain Batiste. Oh yeah, that could be the case too. Good point. Yeah, and that's one of the nice things about the Fnatic Drive so far is it is flexible in how you actually want to go about playing this game. Supremacy though, they now need to finish off this draft. They've got that Grace as a huge frontline and as a great engage tool as well, but I'll be curious to see where they go, whether they go for that kind of all-in style composition or whether it's a more sit back, poke them down kind of thing. Agony, he's got his signature Samuel to work with. And so this is a pick that they have done some pretty massive things on. Batiste generally has been picked up as a counter to the Samuel though. So we'll see if that interaction will work out the same way or if it will be a little bit different they might, this go around. They might go for a Gwen here because I remember Silly's plays Gwen and Gwen is good to, you know, skedaddle outside of a Ordain, but they're going to go with the uh, Glaive here instead. I guess more so to counter the lame Black Feather that they're expecting out of Fnatic here. So are they going to go with a Captain Batiste like Bacon is hinting at, or they're going to pick up the Lyra here. Lyra looks really good into this composition because of Batiste and Blackfeather being able to focus down a target like Samuel or Glaive here. Yeah, that sustain from Lyra would certainly be a, a hefty bo a boon for the side of Fnatic, but we haven't seen them focus on Lyra in the last game. Now, the team really wanted to pick that one up, so I'm curious to see whether that's something Fnatic have in their arsenal. Yeah, maybe they might pick Grumpcha over Lyra again <laughs> and do like a Captain Grumpcha, or maybe... <laughs> Could be uh, jungle. jungle Grumpjaw, yeah. but they're going to go with Finn, actually. I guess they okay. want to specifically counter the Glaive and Grace engage here with Finn. So this could work out in uh, Fnatic's favor. Yeah, you can also soak up a lot of the damage that Samuel will be pumping out. So uh, in an interesting pick for sure, but could definitely be something that works out for them. So now we've seen the compositions. How are we feeling about this match? Can Supremacy turn this into a 2-0? Because they look great in the last game. It's going to be tough because honestly, Fnatic's composition, you know, piece by piece can counter what Supremacy has. It's just going to be a matter of when it's all together. You know, will this Black Feather be able to dive onto the back line, get onto the Samuel? Will the Samuel be close enough? for the Batiste to do the amount of work that he's going to want to do against him. It, so much of this is going to hinge on this Samuel pick. Yeah, and it's like, it's the coordination between getting that ordained down and Blackfeather being able to jump on at that moment mm -hmm. and uh, kind of really uh, uh, abuse that power spike in the fight, I suppose. Power spike's the wrong word, but you get what I mean. Sweejay, how are you feeling about these conversations? I really like Batiste and uh, Blackfeather and Finn into a Glaive, and Glaive is going to be their laner here. So I think Fnatic has the better draft because Glaive can just CC and disable... Uh, I mean, Finn can CC and disable Glaive, mm -hmm. stun him, etc. So I, I really like Fnatic's draft here. All right, so we've got Fnatic facing desk for this second game. We may be going into a third one, but Supremacy, they've got it all to play for in this one. They could 2-0. Let's find out as we pass it over to our casters and head into game. Well, thank you very much, Munchables. And that is right, team. Supremacy versus Fnatic. And good luck and have fun coming out across the board from all these players. It's really just a wonderful thing to see sportsmanship like this. It really, really is. Um, I'm, I'm expecting a little charm coming from Netsuel. I feel like he always throws a little cheeky charm out uh, very early on. Oh, he'll always kiss you before he kills you. Netsuelette moving forward. He's not really a grace early on. It's not, it's not the same thing. It's like you got one quibble, one opportunity. Don't miss it. Tetno drops oh, yeah. down. Slaps Hell's Devil with the on point. One, two basics and should be getting right back in the lane. Helping Net Toilette maybe have an opportunity to zone him out. But Net is holding boots, so if he gets like super low and in trouble, he should be able to boot himself out of there. I, I say this, but then I look over, Hell's Devil is holding his own set of boots. This does allow Palmatoro to very slowly clear out his own backs. However, Agony is rotating over. He has a Drifting Dark. He's here just in time. Let's see a Drifting Dark come out with the Malice and Verdict. You're too late, Agony, you're too late. Lord Dane comes down on Agony, but he just stands his ground. Palmatoro with the bad mojo, not going to connect. Malice misses Verdict, will hit. Now how's Devil and Agony have Palmatoro in quite a juicy little first bloodish type of place. I must say, he's doing first pretty blood. good, but first blood will be going the way of supremacy. Oh, 
Uh, the next one I've been able to pick up second blood there. I think this is what I really like about Grace. If in level one, it's really fun to exploit her high, just you know, her high base damage there. She has this ability. She's got such high, mo you know, base movement speed as well that she can just go over to the other side and just taunt the opponents like that. And she's quite, she can be quite difficult to kill as well. So she is able to pick up those steals. She's able to go for those very aggressive jungle invades very early on, and it works really well. It's put Palmator in a bit of a sticky situation. I mean, he's still keeping up on farm with Agony. Yeah, so six to Agony's five. Yeah, uh, the, the spawn was kind of an awkward timing over there. Um, but uh, yeah, Supremacy doing a very good job, I think, as you said, to abuse the the Grace uh, plus the, the Samuel there. My question is, how is this lane going to play out? I mean, we got the Black Feather against this Glaive. Uh, they're going to be backed up, of course, by the Fen, the Grace. Um, I feel like this Black Feather is going to be very hard to deal with as time goes on, especially because of like Polite Company and the extra durability he's going to have. Yeah, definitely. And if you know, you've got this chain, potential chain CC as well, with the ordained and with the quiver once uh, once Netswell has overdrives it as well. So um, it makes it easy for them to lock down the members, particularly people like Hell's Devil and then Agony as well, who do you know they do have their own uh, crowd controls there. You know, I think CC is going to be a major factor in this game. But for Techno JJ, he has his rules offensive. He's able to escape out of any CC that uh, Supremacy throw at him and just dive straight onto his targets. It's going to be a very difficult time for Agony. I can anticipate maybe not for Mercilius, who does have that. Aft Burn available to escape, uh, but Agony is not going to have such an easy time of it. <laughs> oh, oh, Holy no. Nova connects, but so does the Ordained into that big quibble, and they'll be able to chase Hell's Devil down and actually find the kill with the on point there. Tetno JJ happy to pick up a kill here early on. They need to pick up kill. Hell's Devil is a 3v1 situation, no escape there. Uh, they took advantage of that kind of just over aggression coming out from Hell's Devil as well, but despite that. Supremacy, they're sitting on a small, very small 500 gold lead. I'm not sure this is the best idea for Agony right now. It puts Agony in a sticky situation oh, if he doesn't get, get it. That is the worst feeling. When you commit like a big cooldown or a bunch of your, your energy or health to try kill the Elder Tree and then the opposing jungler walks up and they're like, Oh, thank you for taking that down to one last hit for me. I'll go ahead and have that now. It is the worst. It is the absolute worst there. And Palmatora, he was able to get it. I think once we do see them ramping up a little bit, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tricky. I think especially with Hell's Devil, he's doing a really good job there of using his Holy Nova to stun up the members of Fnatic, and especially because Techno JJ and Netzola, and even actually Palmatoro, the ranges in that group on the Batiste, it's relatively easy for them if just for him to go use his uh, just get right into range using his Benediction, and then land that Holy Nova on multiple members. Mm, that Benediction so OP, uh, properly played through these team fights can reduce a lot of incoming damage and uh, also just allow you to get right into the thick of things and uh, disrupt these fights for Fnatic. Marcelli's doing a good job to farm up here 52 last hits as we approach the five minute mark of this game. One to one net worth pretty even overall. Fnatic move forward as a unit. It's gonna be Hell's Double jumping in. He's looking for the Holy oh, nice. Nova. We'll just land onto net but there's the after burn. Mox hit no back. Still level four taking a bunch of damage. Agony connecting with those Malice and Verdicts. But Agony a little bit zoned out here as he does get isolated, separated away from the herd, so to speak. And uh, he'll have to wrap back around up into the lane if he does want to help contest. And yeah. it's kind of awkward because I feel like he wants to take the mid, but he also wants to help his team out. If he commits to taking the mid, Fnatic drop down like they just did. They just zone him out. So yeah. this is a very awkward positioning game. It is a lot of positioning. I think he's just probably just just back away at this point. We just see a three men uh, rotate coming down from Fnatic. But one thing that's really good from that last fight is that supremacy. They were able to hold onto their fountain, whereas Netswell was forced to use his. So that already gives him a bit of an advantage. And if you look at supremacy, all of the members are practically healed up to full health. Hell's Devil, only one a little bit behind, but she's got that kind of she's got that fountain of renewal. She'll regen over time. This puts him in a comfortable position already. I feel like initially in the early part of the game, supremacy they do have the early game advantage, especially in the team fight. They have a higher damage outputs. And it's once we get into the late game, that weapon Black Feather, that, that Thin as well, they just scale so well into the late game. And that's when they were going to be seeing them coming into their own right now. Techno JJ, he's picked up his Poison Shiv, getting a little bit more defense and sustain there with the little eulogies. So it's going to take a little bit more time before that Black Feather really comes online. Yeah, it will take a little bit longer, but he has the sustain. Uh, building up that weapon power, and right now with the Reflex block, getting close to his level 6, I think, honestly, this is uh, a Black Feather that you need to respect. This is, this is Techno JJ, alright? This this guy, he knows how to play this hero very well. Agony makes his way up in the lanes, jump forward, Afterburn is not in the direction he wants. Actually, makes Techno avoid that Holy Nova. A little bit troll there, coming out of Mercilius. 
Love of a troll there, absolutely, but that is Mercilles to a T. Well, not that he's a troll, uh, but that he's able to kind of just taunt his opponents like this. But right now, Fnatic, they're looking for blood. I'm not sure Agony's in the best positioning here. Sure, Agony is not not in the best positioning at all. No. Nope. some Shade comes through, just tearing through Supremacy. There's a de defensive afterburn coming out of Mercedes is uh, Hell's Devil. I mean, with the Fountain, could not keep Agony. Why? Agony was just a bad place. Now, Tendo, we want to kill Tendo. Come oh, he one. He's going to go down. I know. Was that worth it? Yeah, one for two trade. I'm not so sure. I mean, if we're going to go back to the start of that team fight, yes, Agony was out of position. There's, that is all that can be said. They were able to catch him down, uh, catch him out with the ordained. Uh, he was locked down. He was unable to escape. He doesn't have that reflex block. It, just, it was an overextension on his part. But the fact that Mercedes was able to pick up kill there on Techno JJ was a good save. Okay. Well, ladies and gents, viewers from all around the world, looks like we are currently paused in game two here. Um, no, I think it, it took people by surprise a little bit. Supremacy taking game one. They're doing quite well for themselves here in game two. Would it be like a shock if you saw them take this series? Or would you be like, okay, yeah, I saw this coming. I think in terms, yeah, I think it could be a shock. But, okay, actually, let me let me just put that. Um, let's start over. Start over. Let's just start over. So, I think there's been a kind of a sentiment here that Fnatic, they had a great season last uh, during spring. But for this season, um, we all thought, yes, they've been on holiday, you know, they, that's why they weren't able to kind of just fully commit last time. But this time they're on holiday, they've got, they can really throw everything they've got, but yet they've not been performing as well as we thought they would have. And there was a kind of, kind of a glimmer of hope yesterday, they looked really strong. But the fact that Supremacy, they've just been really biding their time over the last four weeks. So, I, I, ultimately, I do not think it's a surprise for Supremacy take it. Fnatic, they've been making a few mistakes, I think, in the last one, in the last, in the first game of the series. There's a few major mis kind of communications that led to their loss, and if it happens again in this game, I don't think it's any surprise. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, this this squad here, the Supremacy squad, I feel like they, they've been really close for a while, of uh, you know just cracking into the top three consistently um, overall, and obviously very talented players. Looks like we're back into the game. And we'll go ahead and get this one going. Seven and a half minutes in, two to three, net worth dead even. Supremacy and Fnatic Supremacy up one here. Let's see if they can uh, take control of this game. This would this would be a big storyline. The Supremacy can take this win and move forward here. It definitely would be because they've been moving to the finals. I think that would be the first time this season, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know, just rifle through my memory, but I'm not very, I'm not 100% convinced here. But I know, yes, this would be a major win for Supremacy. They've been playing really well today. Uh, I'm, I've been very impressed with Agony so far, actually. It's, I feel like his Scarf last game was very strong, and his Sam has been. Apart from that kind of overextension, has also been very good. Oh, dude, his, his Samuel is on point. They, we had highlights from him earlier in the season uh, where he was like in a three versus one running away, manages to like find a kill onto a target who probably should have killed him. So yeah, I mean, this guy's definitely a player. Uh, he loves the, the CP mages. Definitely a very good Samuel. Definitely. Okay, so we now see Techno JJ. He's picked up that Serpent's Mask, and that's kind of a, a fairly typical item that we see being picked up in the Weapon Black Feathers. They're giving them an extra sustain agony. Is going to escape. Agony is going to get healed. Look at the heal coming out. Hell's Devil. Like, I got you, dude. Don't worry. But that's Musical. a 50 second cooldown. And uh, Net holding that Force the Cord. I mean, Glaive's one of those heroes that. And th there's certain sets of heroes that you just. You're like, ah, I could Force the Cord you, but you have pretty good escapes. Glaive's just one of those heroes. He's just probably going to Afterburn out of there. Unless you catch him with a nice ordained combo. Ooh. Now look at that! Hell's Devil jumps in. Benediction. Uh, Holy Nova, but a lot of damage coming out as he gets turned around. Holding the fountain. I was really uh, playing it on the edge there. But making sure that he, he keeps this item available for his team. Agony's going to have to make his way up into the lane because Fnatic are starting to descend upon Mercilius. He's ordained. And he's going to be able to block that off. Nice reflex. He moves back. But turret's going down. And I'm like, yo, Agony. Where are you at? Agony, he was in the jungle, and he's potentially a bit caught there, a bit of a flank. Hell's Devil, he's been so aggressive in this grace, and I do like that playstyle, uh, but I do feel like Fnatic are able to take advantage of these kind of just very kind of microaggressions coming out from him every single time. We do see Sentinel JJ just really beginning to prioritize that defense now with that Aegis. Uh, I think in terms of like looking at the target focus in the team fights, it's fairly obvious that Agony is going to be the one coming out for, for Fnatic. He has no escape there. If you can lock him down, he is stuck. He does have that Aegis now, so he's able to use his reflex block to avoid one CC. 
But for Mercedes there, he's got that afterburn. Hell's Devil, fairly durable in the front line. Agony though, if they're able to get on top of him and they're able to just kind of body block those mass and verdicts, it's just take and just mitigates so much of supremacy. I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say Fnatic win this game. <sighs> biased caster. Yeah, I'm pretty biased. Big big net toilet, Techno JD, Palma, Toro fan. Uh, Techno's gonna jump in. We just see actually taking a bit of damage. After burns out, make sure the reflex blocks there. Net off the mark with that forced accord. I'm sorry if I cursed you, but I put the curse upon you. I don't, I just don't know about the Aegis on Agony. Now he's starting to build into his next offensive item. I, I just worry that they're not gonna have enough damage out, but Tetno jumps in, he's got sustain. Drifting Dark, they're gonna start to move back. Tetno, Rose defensive, Mercilius is here. He has Afterburn, he's gonna go ahead and find Palmatoro. Palmatoro standing his ground. Oblivion's going to come out, blocked off. Very good job here as the Fnatic trying to kite back. Tetno, he's just, it, it looks like he's not taking damage, but he is, he's taking a lot of damage. They've taken Mercilius down, he moves forward. Boots active, he's got the move speed. You are on top of the Samuel. And this is where Shinji said we wanna be. You wanna be close in the gap. Make sure you can't get out of here. Misses the on point. And that'll be the signal to cancel off. Drifting Dark just come out. Second Drifting Dark of the fight is Agony. He's looking for a target. It's just not really stacking up as far as the damage output. It's it's not that threatening at this point. It's not that threatening. And in that team fight, when Mercilies, he was just really trying to get on top of Palmator. The whole time, Palmator was his principal target there. But the whole time, Techno JJ was just doing a lot of damage to him. And I feel like when you do not have that much armor, Techno JJ should be your main target, but Palmatoro's not going to escape here. Palmatoro's got a reflex block. Three seconds, two seconds till the fearsome shade. Throw it, save yourself! He can't. Oh. Sad story for Palmatoro today. Man, that is, it is. He called him Palmatrozo in the last game. <laughs> You're clearly hearing things. I. Okay, maybe, maybe I'm. That I say. I did say it. I said it. Um, Agony is able to take the mids away from Fnatic. Sorry, I'm just trolling you out a little bit. Shiny, I gotta have some fun here. Guys, also, I'll say it, I said it earlier, Shiny, this could be potentially uh, her last cast for a while, so if you're around, if you're you're a fan, say what's up. And uh, give some love in the chat. <laughs> Big fight here, immense scroll payout. Priscilla's able to close out on that one. As Net and Tetno tried to steal that away, but a, a very nice pickup for Supremacy. Is a good pick up there, and they have even up the playing field in terms of gold discrepancy there. So, what, 200, 100 gold between the two teams? It is completely and utterly insignificant there between the two teams, but they are a tart down. And the way I'm looking at it is, it's just all about a target focus. There's so much CC in this game. This is something that I said earlier is that if you look at both of the teams, you have this Oblivion on Agony that I feel like hasn't made much of an impact yet. You have this Holy Nova, you have this Afterburn, and then on the side of Fnatic. You have the Sardane, you have the Quibble, you have the Quibble, uh, you have the Forced Accord there. There's the Quibble, so much. the Quibble. <laughs> the Quibble, the Quibble. There is so much that they have. That, that's what I mean, though. Yeah. Um, there is just so much that they have. And I feel that... I don't even know where I'm going right now. <laughs> Dude, just go with it. Like, whatever I'm, whatever I'm, you me, feel okay, to say. I'll, I'll just go with the flow. I'll just go with the flow. The thing is, what's concerning for me is that... Look, I feel I do feel that Fnatic's composition they they scale better into the late game, especially with that Black Feather there in there, especially with that Finn. The Glaive I think that just doesn't measure up into Black Feather as time progresses, and I think it's beginning to show because in those one v ones, Techno JJ is winning every single time. He's got that breaking point now. That to me is a major concern because those oh, fights yeah. are going beginning to go on very long. Now. Yeah, I mean it's it's deceptive. You look at the net worth advantage, Fnatic. Yeah, okay, it's, it's not a huge net worth advantage, but this is a team that is going to scale better, right? So, ultimately, that is worth a whole bunch more. And uh, Force Accord comes out. I don't think it was going to connect, but the Crucible does come out from Hell's Devil, making sure nobody's going to get caught in case they actually did walk into that. Palmatoro looking to zone with Bad Mojo, while Tetno just continues to push this wave up here. Looking at the farm, 158 uh, last hits for Tetno, JJ, 14 minutes end, the 143 of Mercilius. I mean, both these guys, you know, they're keeping up with their farm. Nothing crazy as far as that's concerned. You're gonna find the silence onto net. Hell's Devil actually getting caught out there. A lot of damage they jump in, but the turret's still up. They don't want to get in there currently. All right, uh, Agony. Okay, Agony is ready to go. He's got his. He's got his broken net. And this is what. Uh, this is what the Samuel wants. This is what a Samuel needs. That is what the Samuel wants. That is exactly it. Yeah. But there's so much def defense being built against him by Techno JD. He's got the Aegis already. Net is able to body block those uh, Malice and Verdicts coming out. 
at him. And we're seeing just so much kind of like trade-offs between the two teams right now. Neither of them are taking that much damage. Is I feel like it's really going to be coming down to the micro plays of both of these teams right now. It's going to be such a cerebral game, and any mistake being made is just going to be take, completely taken advantage of right now. You say it's going to be like a cerebral game, but then the mistake thing comes. I feel like someone's just going to face check a bush and just get murdered, and then if, then they're going to push and win. <laughs> that's, 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 we're gonna be. This is gonna be like a 30 minute game, and it just feels like the greatest like macro plays, micro outplays, and then someone's just gonna face check, and then they're just gonna yeah, push three turrets and win. We can be like Excalibur, yes, and just tilt majorly off face checks. Did he tilt yesterday? Yeah, we won't bring that up. We're professional went, casters. Ah. Well, no, it is. No, but the thing is, it is tilting to see a, like a face check. You know, the game is going so well. There's been no mistakes made, and then you just see this one moment where it just tilts you. Which is fairly obvious in itself, but never mind. I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to tilt myself, so uh, oh I don't want to. Oh my gosh, that was crazy! Like I just sat back, I didn't say anything, and I just watched you tilt yourself. That was incredible! Cool. Incredible scenes. Incredible! Scene. It was absolutely Actually. incredible scenes. Yeah, I mean, let that be a lesson to everybody out there. You know, it's sometimes you psych yourself out more than anybody. Fanatic, keeping that in mind as they continue to apply pressure here in this game, knowing that. The psychological mind game is such an important aspect of competitive esports, especially Fane Glory. I think Nettolette, probably a student of this game more than anybody. Ah, Nettolette. Probably, yes, like you said, one of the best captains about in the world right now, I think, of Vain Glory. I think, certainly. Do you think it's trolls. a coincidence that he's also one of the most talented trolls, probably? Um, Connected I mean, to the internet at any he given is moment in the world. Finn, so I'm not even sure if that's a pun on your part or. There are layers. There are layers. There are layers with the Well, I would look at the puns. most obvious. There's just truth. It's just. On a, it's it, an honest statement. It, it is he's an making the statement. plays. You know, it's it, he psychs his he psychs his opponents out. You never know what to out. expect. You know. You know he psychs me out. If he's gonna face check, I'm mean, I still tilting. You know, it's absolutely incredible what he's doing. Uh, but we are 17 minutes in. It has been another very, very macro-based game for both of these teams here. And just looking at the builds across the map, a lot of defense being picked up by both sides. Palmatoro probably has the least defense of all the carries on the map. I like that. You, you like that? That is Palmatoro though. He he likes yeah. to. Have his life on the line. Defense will win you a game or two. Offense, that'll win you championships. Force the board, two men onto Supremacy. They pull him back, but look at that. Boots are pretty good. They're able to get themselves out of there. Marsilia is waiting on that afterburn to come back up as they look to turn it around. Drifting Dark is going to be on cooldown as it went the opposite direction. So they were trying to kite back. Now, a lot of abilities starting to come out here as Black Feather moves forward with his on point. He's on target. Oh, you see the fearsome shade come out in there, able to just melt through supremacy. What did I tell you? Double kill. Team, when it happens, ace. it is going to really, really happen. And uh, this is going to be the ace into, let's see, a turret push, a kraken, and dare I say, GG? I would not say GG at this point in time, but you know what? I've been wrong Calling in the it. last GG. game. Okay, you're saying GG. I'm saying it's not GG just yet for... Uh, for them, I feel like there's still there's still hope, and for me in this game, this hope lies on Palmatoro's shoulders. I feel like every single team fight that's been won so far by Fnatic, I feel it's really resting on his shoulders, because he's using his ordain so well. Like, I think part of it does come down to the way supremacy are playing. They're playing so clumped up together that they, they trap themselves essentially in this ordain, all three members, and it's just so easy there for Netzel to be like, okay, I'm gonna quibble you, and then I'm just. Yeah, it's it's almost like it's textbook at this point for Fnatic. It's textbook for Palmatoro, and and I think part of the issue is that we part of the reason is coming to the compositions and how they're scaling up, and also oh agony, agony no agony, a face check, a face check I'm into the, into the in, the in game ending push. I can't even talk anymore. Game end end game game end ending push. Yeah, whatever. It's all this gonna happen GG. right now. It's Fnatic move in as a group two versus three. I think this, I, I, I'm not sure that they can fight all three members there of Fnatic right now, especially with the Kraken pushing in. They can't! Two hearts left. Uh, feels really bad at oh, this dude. point. You know when you predict how the game is going to end, it's always fun. But they gave us a lot of time to think about predictions. Hell's Devil's going to find the heal on the Mercedes. It's a very powerful heal, keeping his ally alive. There's no damage has yet come out onto Fnatic. <laughs> to do something. 
No, this is Agony. He's respawn, drifting dark. Malice invert to splash and techno jade. dropping low, but they take out Hell's Devil. And this is Fnatic looking to close out on game number two Double and tie kill. this series up in a dominating fashion. Look at Netflix with the mind games at the end. He says, look out, try, 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 try to teleport out. Cancel my teleport. I got a Kraken. I do what I want. I'm net to let I'm the best spin player in the world. Come at me, bro. And they came at him. And what a game. I feel like that was... I, I feel like part of that was Supremacy. They made a few mistakes there. I think Agony caught, got caught twice in the duration of this game. But Fnatic, for me, it really came down to Palmator and the way he was using her as deemed to trap the members of Supremacy every single time. I think that was absolutely pivotal in every single team fight uh, in the last five minutes there for me. Man, for you, it was uh, Paul Montoro. For me, it was Net Toilet. Well, let's see what our guys back at the desk think. Net Toilet stepping up 0 9 on that fin, and Fnatic managed to take a game in the series. We are going all the way in this first semi final. And honestly, this is looking very close between the two teams. Both games so far easily could have gone in any direction. Yeah, this one was a little bit tougher for the side of Supremacy. You know, the composition, I think Fnatic had a really strong composition and were able to play it the way that they should have. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, once we got kind of past the, the 10 to 12 minute mark, it really looked like it was going to be Fnatic all the way. Yeah, and towards the start of the game, it was, it definitely was going back and forth. We definitely saw both teams managing to take advantages off each other, Sweet Jay. Yeah, for sure. Fnatic, you know, played their game really well. They actually used their power spike there with the Batiste fear there. They feared Agony onto the wall, killed him. Nintendo Go ahead, gets a trade here, which is fine because they got two for one, honestly. So Glaive gets a kill and Nintendo gets a kill here. From there, Fnatic needed to push some objectives, maybe uh, get jungle. They pushed a the wave there. They do get first turret. But there's one fight here where they kill Glaive in this instant. And Fnatic does not use this advantage, again, uh, uh, objective-wise. They don't get gold mine or anything off this play. The Glaive dies and they stick around trying to get a fight. Then Supremacy comes back. They kill Agony. They kill... Um, Batiste and Jungle, and then they take the gold mine. So Fnatic had some misplays, but in the end, late game, their comp was just better, and they won off the Ordain and the Finn Quibble combo. Yeah, and speaking of late game, we have a few replays of the fights, and I really feel like Net Toilet's Finn was just so difficult to deal with, so disruptive for the team of Supremacy. Yeah, it really made it difficult for them to try and get onto the Batiste, which was what they had to do. You know, both sides had their CP mage that needed to be the focus target. Fnatic just had a much easier time of getting onto the Samuel than Supremacy did of getting onto the Batiste. Yeah, and Agony had some really bad drifting dark decisions there. He didn't position him the right way. He got caught out easily. You know, you shouldn't put yourself in a position to get quibbled by Finn in that one fight. And then and the Kraken was taken in, and you just saw it now. He got killed by face checking the bush. And then that basically sealed the deal there after he was killed. And there was an 18 second cooldown once Kraken entered the base. So I felt like Agony didn't play to his best. He kind of threw a little bit, honestly. He needs to position better as a jungle carry, as Samuel. He needs to have better drifting darks. needs to poke and keep his distance from Finn. Which is interesting and because he, he's someone we praised a lot on his Samuel play. Yeah, so his Samuel was really good. Maybe feeling a bit of pressure on this one. Uh, maybe not quite playing to his best performance. I want to talk a little bit about this Black Feather pick, though, because it's clear that Black Feather is a very strong, very comfortable pick for Fnatic because we've seen Palmatari yesterday do incredible things on Black Feather. Now we've just seen Techno JJ have a great performance. Is this something that you would consider banning as supremacy at this stage, or is it not impactful enough to to warrant that kind of attention? I think this is something you can ban in the second phase of bans. Like there's they banned the Arden this time around. I think banning away the Black Feather would have been significantly more impactful than banning away the Arden, which hasn't really been an impactful hero. Like it's it's played a ton but it's not completely game-changing. Teams have found ways to work around the Arden. You have so many ways to get past the gauntlet or you know, to deal with the gauntlet coming out. It's, it's kind of strange to me that they put the emphasis on banning away that Arden instead of something that Fnatic has been making massive amounts of impact with. Yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts on the draft coming up, Sweetie? What needs to change for Supremacy to be able to finish the series? Yeah, I think there's an overly focus on Arden here. Blackfeather and Finn are very strong together because Finn gives a barrier, Blackfeather gets a barrier, mm -hmm. Blackfeather gives him the Rose Shell, which lets Finn kind of walk up with the extra speed boost to then quibble and get close to the enemy opponents. So I feel like Blackfeather is a key combination of Fnatic. It's a it's a flex pick. They can flex them to jungle 
or it inflects them to lane depending on the draft. So this is something that I think Supremacy needs to keep an eye out for, for sure. So do we feel now that Supremacy are in a position like poised to take this series? Do we still feel like Fnatic are the favorites moving into this last game? Because that's that was what we were saying coming into the first game. But with how close the games are, I'm not sure if there is a particular favorite. I'm not sure if Fnatic are really that far ahead of this team. It's. I think that Fnatic is still a favorite, but it's not by a lot. Uh, okay. There definitely is still an edge towards Fnatic, just historically and just in terms of the way that the teams have been playing in the games themselves. I mean, that first game should have not been as close as it was for Supremacy. Like it, the fact that they almost lost past the 20 minute mark with the Baron Scarf combo shows me that Fnatic does have an edge over Supremacy. It's just going to be, but it is one that again, Supremacy can take games off of Fnatic and can win this series. Well, I think one of the strongest things Supremacy has been showing so far is their draft. Their game one draft was incredibly good. Game two, strong as well. We'll see what they're going to be able to pull out on game three here, Sweet Jay. Yeah, let's see if Fnatic's going to pick up this Lyra. They're going to first pick that Black Feather, but the oh. head, they're going to take the, <laughs> the Arden. EU classic. What is up with Arden, guys? Lyra is so good into Arden because she, when she bulwarks, Arden cannot Vanguard, he cannot use his abilities. Lyra actually counters that, Arden. But you're leaving Baron open once again. Yeah, that Baron is open just too. Pick up and again, you know, Arden. While it is, you know, it's a strong pick, sure, but it's not the end all, be all of captains. I mean, you look in Europe; it's sitting at a 50% win rate coming into this week, but it's their most played hero by yeah. a long shot. For a, I'm not really sure why these guys and hate Baron. Yeah, and their supremacy okay. picks up Lance here. They tend to favor the Lance you, always, and then they're going to go ahead and Baron. pick up. Why are up. you banning it away from yourself? Yeah, B side Fnatic did the same thing. They banned the Baron against themselves, and I felt like the Baron ban is, has to come up from the A side because with Baron uh, up, like that, that's a good B side pick, and then you can just like ban Idris or something instead and force him to ban the Baron from you. So they're going to ban a Samuel away from Agony here. That's interesting because Agony didn't play the best Samuel, although he did have a, a decent Scarf. So now Supremacy has a few options here. They can pick up that Black Feather or give it to Fnatic because Fnatic's probably going to pick Black Feather honestly here. Or they can pick up an Idris here potentially. Yeah. Um, let's see what Supremacy said. There's also Batiste open, so they can run a Batiste Lance composition. But they're going to have to go with that Idris here. The Fnatic's going to pick up the Black Feather along with potentially a Batiste here against the Idris. Yeah, looking at a very similar composition to what we had last game from Fnatic, but the Lance into the hands of Hell's Devil once again. We've seen how much of an impact he can be, so maybe that can be the difference maker. What, what are we thinking about this Idris pick? How does How is that going to play into the Black Feather, into the Batiste, if those are the picks for Fnatic? I mean, it's, it depends on if they're going to run it Weapon or Crystal. Uh, if it's going to be Crystal, then they're just going to try and poke and harass the same way as Blackfeathers, but it's not going to be Blackfeathers. It's going to be Glaive Batiste okay. for okay. Fnatic. This is interesting because Blackfeathers is still better in this situation because with Arden, Blackfeathers is double barrier. Glaive, uh, Lance can like root him and CC, and Blackfeather can dodge all that CC. So again, an interesting draft by Fnatic there. Maybe they want to deny Glaive on the side of Supremacy or something, but this is still a good composition into Idris though, but Lance is just better into Glaive. So now Supremacy has a few options. I don't know if they want to run a Scarf potentially here because he can outrange mm -hmm. the Glaive and the Batiste, but they need to keep him safe if they're going to run the Scarf here. They need to make sure Lance protects the Scarf. So I, most likely though, I think Agni is probably going to go with the Scarf here. Yeah, we've or, seen Agony play Scarf before as or well. Or they go Rhyme. If they go Rhyme, they can win the draft, honestly. If they go Rhyme, the draft is going to be a GG here if Agony plays Rhyme. But instead, they're going with Grumpjaw Grumpjaw. here. So hopefully this is a weapon Grumpjaw with a CP Idris, and I think Supremacy will potentially win the draft here. All right, well, Supremacy looking good with this one. And Grumpjaw, once again, we keep coming back to this conversation. It's slipping through a lot of the drafts, and it's going to be picked up as a last pick. It's like a polar opposite of what yeah. we were seeing in week one. How are we feeling about the drafts, Bacon? Who, do you feel like Supremacy has an advantage like Sweet Jay is saying? Yeah, definitely. If this is the weapon Grumpjaw with a CP Idris, then they have an advantage. They can just poke with the Idris, you know, with the Chakram hits, and it chunks out health, especially on someone like a Batiste. That's almost half his health if he gets hit with the Chakram in both directions. So uh, if they just let that hit 
and then dive in with the Grump Jaw, Weapon Grump Jaw, that should be the rest of Batiste's health in an instant. So they have the potential to completely blow yep. up a target as long as they're coordinated and they go with that specific build. If they don't, if they run this as a Weapon Idris and a Crystal Grump Jaw, they're going to fall off incredibly hard towards the late game. The Grump Jaw is not going to be able to have anywhere near as much effect. All right, well, we'll see if that is going to be the case on this one. It's just about time that we head on into the third game of this semi-final. Can Supremacy get the upset on Fnatic or are Fnatic going to make it through to the final once again? Let us know who you are voting for at home. Hashtag Vainglory8 is how you can get in touch on Twitter. But without further ado, it's time to head on into the third game of our first semi-final of the day. Our third game indeed. Tied up 1-1, Fnatic versus Supremacy. This has been an, a real treat of a series, wouldn't you say, Shinyi? Oh, yes. And I feel like a lot of people going into the series would have said, Fnatic, it should be an easy 2-0. Uh, just though if you look at the point standings, that's the way it, you know, that's the way it should have been feeling like. But Supremacy, they've been absolutely on fuego. And Fnatic, <laughs> they've, you know, uh, that is true. They have been on fire. But Fnatic, they they brought it back in the last game, and this time we're seeing Pamatora on their Batiste again. And uh, I said before, big fan of Pamatora's Batiste. I think he played it really well. But this time, Supremacy, they've got a comp that I think faces much better into this one coming into Fnatic, especially with that Idris there. Yeah, I mean, the Idris is definitely going to shake things off. A very elusive, and if he keeps up in his farm, uh, we'll have high damage output as well. We'll just have to hope that Tetano can't lock him down as we get later into the game. Flare's going to come out here. So was that Palma or Net that threw that flare? I actually didn't uh, didn't see. Probably Net Toilet threw that out. Supremacy will move, throw out a flare of their own into the left try brush here. We'll see the scout trap plus moving forward. They'll probably clear this out. Look to apply some poke damage. Nah, they're gonna just back off. Make it make the safe play. Uh, they know that scout's there, so they won't be surprised oh. though. Idris is gonna be knocked oh, back into the ordained and Mercilles. Uh, Shroud Slap is buying a little bit of time. Can you get your booty First out of here? Blood. No, you can. First Blood will be going the way of Fnatic. Very nice combination there. Uh, the Afterburn. You know, we, especially you know, if you're playing against a Glaive, you really do expect the Afterburn coming a lot. But to get knocked back into an Ordained where you're essentially trapped, very nice combination. I really hope Fnatic will be pulling off a lot more uh, throughout the first few minutes of this game. At least until Mercilles has his little Reflex block. I don't see if we stop that from happening as much. Mercilius just dancing his way out into the lane where he can start to pick up some of that CS that he was starting to fall behind in. But there's a nice little juicy wave. And he's going to get most of these last hits here. Tetno hanging out as Hell's Devil applies a bit of damage, a little poke. And you got to respect this Lance. I mean, he's also sitting on the boots as well. So, like, if he does get advantage, it's going to be really good for him. Wait, <laughs> it's a nice advantage here, though, as Xing Yi would say. Second blood. Second blood. That is a thing. It's going to become a thing. And Fnatic, they do the same thing again. And I think Supremacy, they have to be a little more cautious now. So that's the second, you know, Hell's Devil went in very, very quickly there as well. So I think just to maybe have, a, you know, for Supremacy, they should just line the lane, push it under their turrets. Um, every time they kind of cross that halfway mark, uh, Technology just goes, well, today I'm going to find some blood. And he does it. Yeah. I mean, on, I'm, I'm serious. I think Net is so deep in there. You guys didn't even, you didn't get to look. What chat was saying, what they were saying in the game lobby, Net Toilette so deep into Supremacy's minds right now that it's hard to believe that they can actually uh, use their abilities properly at this point. That's that's a, a wonderful thing to watch. It is a very wonderful thing to watch. Uh, but it's, it's a good start there for Fnatic. Uh, they picked up two kills very early on. But Supremacy, they've not been able to take, in terms of like a, a jungle control, they've not been able to deny too much away from Supremacy. Gold, um, very, very close right now. And actually, we're seeing Supremacy. They're the ones that are going into the jungle of Fnatic and denying the middle treant and the fronts away from Palmat's Horror there. So Agni, he's doing a really good job. And actually, what, kind of one thing that I want to point out, we're going to be seeing this weapon Grumjaw coming out mm -hmm. and a crystal Idris. And usually we're, when we see an Idris on the fold, it's quite commonly a weapon Idris in the Vainglory 8. And I feel like whenever we have seen this crystal Idris come out, it's perhaps not fitted as well to the composition, but I think for this one, there is a lot of possibility. You can have a good range. He doesn't have to get close to Palmator as well. He can just consistently throw those Chakrams out. And you just rely, really rely on Agony there for upfront damage. Mm hmm Absolutely. Uh, and when you unlock that Divergent Path, you get the the uh, the range attack. It is pretty OP. We'll see if he can remain at range and apply a lot of damage as we get into the late game and gets a bit more items. For now, though, 
keep our eyes on Agony because this Grumjaw is going to be picking up his Tension Bow probably into some Tyrant's Monocles. Um, a very bursty type of build. And through the early mid game, we'll just be blowing targets up, especially if he can get on that Batiste. Oh, definitely. That weapon Grumpjaw. This is all about the early game for the Grumpjaw. He, this is his time to shine. And he doesn't really care if he's just kind of up in their faces. He's got a living armor there. So he can just get right to damage. Oh, they get the stuffed. They get the stuffed. Netolette pulled back. He's level four. Let's just see the, the Vanguard coming out to reposition. And he's like, I'm out of here. That's no the thing deal. about going for the rope, the captain, though, is that they have to say, but, you know, he was able to use his vanguard back. You can't escape. And now, Agony, they don't have their stuff ability that available, so they could they just use that up. Feels bad, man. It does feel a little bit bad. It, it does feel quite bad. Um, so we do see Mercedes pick up that Frostburn now. And we are just biding our time very slowly in the lane again. Biting our time. Mercilius has the Frostburn. We'll see if that comes into play here as he does make his way back out into the lane for now. Fnatic dropping as three. Looks like they'll probably go hit up the shop. I'd like to see them combo up the stuffed for Agony with maybe, you know, a nice Githian wall from Hell's Devil. Um, something like that. A little, just chaining them up, them up just a little bit. It's going to help a whole bunch here as we move forward. Oh, Afterburn, wow. we'll go ahead and knock our Idris back. Can they follow up a lot of damage to the Vanguard, boosting Tetno forward? Tetno, why are you show mercy today, Tetno? He shows no mercy to Marcellus, which I just realized, okay. Uh, <laughs> never mind. I was just about to have a blonde moment there. It's okay. Yeah, it's just blonde moments just kind of going past right now. Have it. I'm having it. I'm really it having happen. it. I'm, I'm letting it go. Agony so just had a moment as well as Net blocked off his uh, his stuffed. That was a nice little play. Agony, he's over the wall, but he's found Fnatic. A Tetno JD is there. And uh, this is going to be Tetno grabbing the mid right in front of Agony. It uh, had to have been quite a surprise jumping Marcellus. over the wall and just finding uh, the, the two from Fnatic. There. The oh, ordained. Mercilius knocked back. What is this? This is not the, the same teams. As we had in the last two games, this is insane. They're actually uh, they're trying to kill people right now. Bad Mojo chasing. Mercedes should be going down here. Rest in peace, dear Idris, as he falls to his death. And Fnatic have complete control of this game, building a small net worth lead. I imagine that should start to snowball here as time moves forward. Three to zero, seven minutes in. Okay, so I'm going to make a few points here. First point is, I feel this is a very different team uh, that we're seeing coming in from Supremacy. They had a fantastic game one. Never mind that there's a fight going on. Or is there? There is nah. not a fight. So anyway, back to what I was saying. My first point is that Supremacy, this does not seem like the team that we saw in game one. They look very, very on form. And this one, it just seems very disjointed coming out from them. And Mercilius, as that Crystal Idris, he's being very far forward on the lane. He has no escape, but he's been consistently caught out by that chain CC coming out from the members of uh, Fnatic. And if you look at the composition, that's the first thing you should be thinking of, is just be wary of the possibilities that they're throwing at. And they've done it so many times with the Afterburn and the Ordain, and here it goes again! Afterburn, he will block the Ordain and get himself back, but oh, like Shimmer Strikes! He's gonna be all right back <laughs> into the stun net while I calculated the position a beautiful mind, a beautiful player, a three-man gifting wall. I've never seen a three-man gifting wall such as that one. Agony finds the stuffed. He's gonna get grumpy and pull him back under the turret. Palmatoro, he's a squishy Palmatoro. Ordained is down onto Agony. Net Toilet jumps forward with a little blood for blood. How about some fierce shade, fanatic? Moving in deep, Hell's Devil, one attack. They might be able to take him down. Tetno holding his afterburn. Tetno, what is the play? Tetno the merciful today. Just letting Mercilles live, letting Agony live, letting Hell's Devil live, but not the turret. This is a, an objective focused glaive here. Laser-like focus coming out of Tetno JJ. One of the fastest objectives that we've seen being taken today. I mean, in the first, past two games, I don't think we've seen a turret being taken before 15 minutes. And Fnatic, they're beginning to pick up that gold lead. They're using their chain CC. They are incredibly focused right now. And I feel like as we're seeing improvements in Fnatic's game, Supremacy are maybe falling off a little bit. And I think with such a great potential composition coming out from their team, it's a bit disappointing that they are just maybe not playing on tilt, but they seem off in this game. Yeah, fair to say. Um, you know, to be fair, at this point, Divergent Paths have been unlocked. Uh, it'll be a little easier for Masilis moving forward, although he's definitely behind where he'd like to be. And Agony, very capable of blowing up a target if he can get on a target. Um, Palmatoro is really the one that he wants. Agony is going to be knocked back. They find the stun, they chop him down. 
He's gonna use Grumpy to reposition, but he goes down. Now Hell's Devil trying to protect his ally, but Hell's Devil, he gotta get out of here, bud. He used his fountain already, and Palmo Toro, he smells death. He will chase forward. Ordains there, they're gonna block it off. Moving Bad Mojo will not connect. And it looks like Supremacy have bought Mercilles about 30 to 40 seconds worth of farming time with that play. Uh, yes, but he's still behind on Techno JJ, 111, and he's on sitting on 100 there. So yes, he has un unlocked the Divergent Paths. Fnatic, they've gone for the Goldmine as well. That's going to increase the Gold Lead even more to about 5k after this. And this, lead, this is beginning to give Fnatic the new, kind of the items that they need. Immense They're already a little bit ahead, I think, collected. in terms of gold, which they are, and items. And it's showing, and I think in terms of the gameplay as well right now, the way they're executing the fights is very polished. I'm, I'm very impressed with the way they're chaining the CCs together, especially with that ordained afterburn combination. Yeah, super clean <clears throat> as far as their combos. But uh, I just, I, I just have this sneaking suspicion that Supremacy is going to blow some, one of these targets up here pretty quickly. Broken Myth now complete for Massilius's Supremacy begins to move forward. They should be very careful. Now he can attack from range, throw Chakrams, and start to chip through this turret. But the rest of Fnatic have made their way up. We're going to look for the Fearsome Shade. The Gauntlet only connect connecting on the Hell's Devil here. It's Tetno moving forward with that Afterburn looking for a target, but pulling off of the fight as he felt he did not have the correct positioning needed to apply the most damage there. Tetno also building quite a bit of defense. This Glaive is going to be so hard to take down. He is going to be so good. Uh, you know, he's got that Aegis already. And I think when Mercilles threw out the Chakram, it wasn't as hitting as hard as we would like it to be. And he's also going to be going for that Pauldron's, not Pauldron's Metal Jacket as well, especially there for Agony. It's maybe taking away a lot of the damage. And he is able to get right. He, he does not mind being right up in their faces and just dealing damage there. He's quite happy to do so. But Supremacy in that last push did a decent amount of damage there on the tower. I think when Mercilles gets a chance, those Chakrams really do hit hard. And I think if they make another push at that and get that tower, that's what they that's what they want just to even up the playing field a little bit yeah they just man they got to play that positioning game until they get a little bit of an angle onto palmatoro and then they just smoke him i mean just you're gonna rip this batista apart if you can apply all of your damage especially uh if we've seen the idris pick up a couple uh bm stacks you know from throwing out some just his chakra uh maybe early on in the fight when they start to apply that pressure uh, Palmatoro will melt down if they can get there. That's the if. That's the if. That Fnatic. The if. They really haven't provided a window of opportunity yet, and it's just, uh, it's uh, pretty impressive stuff. There is just so much peel on the side of Fnatic. They have a lot of opportunity to disengage in agony. Oh, he's able to escape this time, and as I was saying before, there's a lot of opportunity for disengage there, on the side of Fnatic. So yes, you do have. Agony, he can use his Grumpy, he can use his stuff to get on top of Palmatoro, but then then again you've got this Afterburn Gauntlet combination or ordained. There's so much that Fnatic can use to counter these to prevent Palmatoro from being taken away. And they're pulling off very flawlessly right now. So Supremacy, they just really need to just keep their cool right now. Just watch out for just position. Farm, farm, farm. Keep they're cool. doing well. Yeah. Agony's out farming a lot. Well, uh that's all he can do, because he's missing his stuffed. Agony. Feels bad. Feels quite bad, man. Does. Uh, gold payout collected. So Agony, he's he's kind of the main upfront damage dealer there on on side of Supremacy. He's gonna be the one that's trying to get right on top of Palmator and Techno JJ. The issue is that he doesn't have that much defense, um, and I think the part that's explaining part of the reason why he's not able to survive as long as he Crystal is. Century. That's a nice Gideon wall there from Supremacy. Crystal Sentry will go down. Fnatic are going to be looking for a fight. Yeah. Agony's going to block off the Ordain, but look at the Gauntlet catching the interest. Melted down. 697 damage coming through from Palmatoro. I see just rose through Mercilles. Like, he looked quite silly in that fight. I, I gotta say, like. Mercilly? Just Mercilly. <laughs> we need a name. Mercilly. That was not where he needed to be. Or maybe he's like, yo, Agony, this is where you want to stand. This is where we need you to stand in these fights. Dude, honestly, at this point, you're just going to drown. You're just very slowly, painfully, as the viewers will watch you drown and lose this series, Supremacy, unless you turn on the gas. 
at some point. I feel like we need Agony more in the front line. He's used to playing these CP laners. Grumtraw is a different beast. Hell's Devil stunned up. After burn, he will go ahead and pop his reflex as he looks to reposition and his Crucible. Net this is taking it. a lot of damage here though from Grumtraw and Indra's on the back line, but he should be able to reposition. Fearsome Shade will catch one and two. Agony, Grumpy trying to get himself back here. Tetno doesn't have energy for the afterburn. And this should be Supremacy getting out with two members alive. And Shocker, I'm not going to connect on the Tetno. Net hanging out here, ready to after, or, uh, Vanguard onto his ally if he does need to do so. But in the end, Fnatic, they get a Crystal Sentry, they get one kill, and they get out clean. They do, and I think they're going to jungle off the back of it. You know, that's an interesting point that you were saying before. So we are very typically used to seeing Agony on those Crystal, uh, Radiant Crystal heroes. And it is a bit of a different play style that he's required to be playing this weapon, Grumjo. And I do feel that he is... It's he's not quite reconciled with that. It is very different, and he is going he is going for Nettola every single time with the stuffed. And I feel like that's not the best idea because Nettola is able to escape every single time. You know, ideally the target we want is Palmatoro. Palmatoro is in range. It is possible for him to be going on him in some of those attempts. Um, and yeah, I think the levels of aggression just don't match, quite match the composition that Supremacy are playing right now. Yeah, something is a bit mismatched here. Uh, this game very off for Supremacy. It's just never found their footing, you know, never really got too comfortable, never were able to establish themselves in a team fight, never able to set the pace or dictate a movement uh, through the map, any rotations, anything. The only thing they've been able to do is like throw one hero into Fanatic's waiting jaws so that Brasilis could farm another wave. And it may be happening again as Hell's Devil well, he's caught and he's chopped down. I mean, literally case in point. I could have been like watching a replay that just happened. It's literally the same thing. One person dying so Mercilius can farm an extra wave in the hopes that somehow they can make a play uh, later on as time goes on. Kraken being captured up. Supremacy will continue to move it? forward here. Shingy, this this is going to be a potential steal, but we got Fearsome Shade. You got Afterburns Ordain. Ordain on to Mercilius. He's going to be able to reposition. They'll block that off. Here's some shade. We'll get on to Agony and the damage. Just the damage there. Bad Mojo can't quite connect on to the bobtail of Agony as he gets himself out of there. And with that failed attempt, though, this will be Kraken going the way to Fnatic. This will be Kraken. And it's just positionally, Supremacy just aren't quite there right now. They're just quite right there. I'm not even sure if it's just allowing Marsilius to farm a little bit more. I feel like the damage output is not there coming out from him or from Agony at this point. And in that last... Not even team fight, that last kill there. Hell's Devil, you know, he, he's landing these really great multiple Githian walls and pales on the members of Fnatic. There's just no follow up in the sign of Supremacy. And when we do see Agony going in, this is the weapon Grumpjaw. He's not using his basic attacks. He's you know, you're relying a little bit too much on his skills for my liking. He keeps trying to throw Spitfires and he's like, it's not working. Oh man. I Where's don't know. Flames? My Malice and Verdicts aren't connecting here. Um, okay, so one turret down, Hell's Devil's gonna be stunned up as he looks to roll back. Tetno finds him after Burns, and uh, there'll be a self fountain, and he's gonna boot his way to safety. So the rest of the Fnatic plus Kraken and low health to send down here. They're gonna find the Fear of Agony melting low Silly's as well. He's able to get back out of the double. You shent. As Tetno able to clean that one up. Palm with Toro, such great control. Net Toilette uh, holding Fountain, still has Atlas Pauldron, still has a Gauntlet, just in case uh, Supremacy had a couple substitutes that they could throw in right now. They could probably spawn two more heroes uh, right now and lose this game. I think so too. This is a very slick game coming out from Fnatic and a not so slick game coming out from Supremacy. And I think it just kind of the start the 2 0 there from Fnatic and the first five minutes of the game. Just kind of really set the momentum for. The how this was going to be played. I mean, it's 10 0, they're 6k ahead at 18 minutes. It's probably the fastest game we've seen in Europe this weekend. Potentially. Maybe the fastest game, but the longest series I've seen in the last two years. Whew. Uh, we're almost two hours into this one here, ladies and gents. This was quite the series. Back and forth going to game three. Supremacy, let's be real, they put up a pretty good fight. It's kind of sad to see them go out like this uh, in game three. Well, with that, Supremacy going down, Fnatic moving forward. And to keep this broadcast moving forward, we're going to throw it back to Munchables at the desk. Thank you very much, Humanist. Yeah, that is going to be the end of the series. Fnatic taking it 2-1 in the end. Two incredibly close games. And then Fnatic rounding things out with a perfect game to finish things off. And honestly, a very focused game when it comes towards ganking the enemy laner. Masilis 
Kind of got bullied a little bit during that early game, Sweet J. Yeah, Fnatic was able to do some really tight three-man rotation. We had Ordain and Glaive afterburn combo and got and ganked Mercilles three times. Three times in lane he got ganked, which allowed them to push their lead. And because of that, these rotations, Fnatic was able to push their early game lead and slowly get a 1k go lead, 2k go lead, 